Russell Brand, a guy who was sold to the public as a libertine sex case, is currently undergoing a damning public exposure for being a sex case. The idea that Brand, a former self-abusing addict, would not have a dubious sexual history would seem unlikely. Nevertheless, after a lengthy investigation by journalists with an unlimited budget, a number of women have alleged inappropriate and potentially criminal sexual behaviour and he will now have to manage the very real fallout. Many people believe that Russell Brand is now being targeted because his success as an anti-mainstream media broadcaster makes him a threat to establishment power. These people are correct. Russell Brand does pose a threat to establishment power, but not to the right wing's media establishment. Rupert Murdoch may well have set fire to Russell Brand's career and reputation, but in the online courts of cancel culture, it is the liberal left who are eagerly pouring propellant on the flames. No section of society is more jubilant at the murdoch fueled downfall of Russell Brand than the petty bourgeois, woke and liberal elite practitioners of identity politics. And this is not the first time they have sought to cancel Russell Brand. The Liberals' cancellation of Russell Brand actually began a decade ago, when one of the most important thinkers of the modern age published a controversial document condemning the left's abandonment of class politics and inextricably linking Russell Brand to a new and terrifying social phenomenon emerging from the online left. The social phenomenon that we now call cancel culture. The identitarian liberal left cannot tolerate the existence of Russell Brand as a figure of influence because Russell Brand possesses something they deny the existence of, the voice of the working class. In reality, it is the liberal elites and their dominion over the left-wing opposition whose power Brand truly threatens. And the cancellation of Russell Brand holds implications for all of us, because underpinning this salacious spectacle is a perverse neoliberal project of cultural engineering that, if disrupted, could alter the balance of power in our entire society. This is the slow cancellation of Mark Fisher's Russell Brand. Ten years ago, the cultural theorist, lecturer and author Mark Fisher published an essay in which he identified the birth of cancel culture within the online left and described the psychopathology of its middle-class liberal proponents. The essay quickly became one of the most contested and controversial political texts of the modern age, and Russell Brand was the catalyst for its creation. In 2013, Mark Fisher had become increasingly distressed by a toxic culture emerging from the online left. Under a febrile, McCarthyite atmosphere, individuals were called out, vilified and persecuted for their personal failings by groups of witch-hunting moralists. This behaviour ran counter to the Marxist tradition of structural critique, and it depressed Fisher greatly. Although horrified by the online inquisitions and call-out culture, Fisher felt too afraid to speak up, lest he too became the focus of the witch hunt and he found himself living in a state of fear and self-censorship. He considered withdrawing from politics entirely. You don't believe in democracy. No, you want a revolution, don't you? The planet is being destroyed. We are exploiting poor people all over the world. Massive corporate and economic exploitation. And you're that angry about it? I am angry. Because for me, it's real. For me, this is what I come from. This is what I care about. When Russell Brand appeared on Newsnet in the legendary exchange with Jeremy Paxman, Fisher had at once felt inspired and moved, unable to recall a time where a person from a working class background had been given the space to so consummately destroy a class superior using intelligence and reason. When the online left's response to the intellectual trouncing began to emerge the following day, it was clear to Fisher what the grander implications were. The profound class dynamics of the exchange appeared invisible. Brand's humorous, self-educated triumph over the public school Paxman was rebranded as a triumph for sexism and misogyny. 
condescending perspectives on Bran's mental stability, his vernacular, his inevitable imminent relapse and his patchy education were numerous, whilst his working class background was apparently no longer valid because he had become a millionaire. The liberal elites, then nascent woke, were not interested, as Fisher was, in viewing Brand as an inspiring avatar of working class intellect and agency. They were interested only in Brand as a bad person. Dumbfounded by the prejudice pouring from so-called leftists, an enraged and invigorated Fisher tore off his psychological shackles to write one of the most important political essays of modern times and what would ultimately become his testament. The paper was titled Exiting the Vampire Castle. In it, Fisher conducts an eye-watering vivisection on the modern left and delivers a spectacular Freudian deconstruction of progressive elites and their bourgeois liberal perversions. Over 10 pages, he spits at the left's abandonment of class politics, savages the pious moralising identitarians responsible and calls for total ideological revolution. The essay describes a movement eroded by a debilitating atmosphere of snarky resentment and succumbing to a pervasive online culture where class has disappeared but moralism is everywhere, where solidarity is impossible but guilt and fear are omnipresent. Determined to identify the social components responsible, Fisher constructs his figurative Vampire's Castle as the psycho citadel of identity politics and conceptualises five laws to describe the warped libidinal tendencies of its occupants. Anyone depressed by the anti-enlightenment irrationality of today's cancel-rich culture war will immediately recognise the behaviours and attitudes that Fisher identified and skewered a decade ago. He accuses liberal elites and online left identitarians of propagating guilt, weaponising victimhood and feigning marginality in order to distract from the reality of their privilege and influence. And he compares them to vampires who absorb and appropriate the energy of authentic socio-political struggles in order to advance their own narrow narcissistic interests. Fisher writes, the problem the vampire's castle was set up to solve is this. How do you hold immense wealth and power while also appearing as a victim, marginal and oppositional? The solution was already there in the Christian church. So the vampire's castle has recourse to all the dark pathologies and psychological torture instruments Christianity invented. The sanctimonious denizens of the vampire castle appear devoid of humour, incapable of nuance, are genetically passive-aggressive and bound together by their own dark hearts. Or as Fisher states, What holds them together is not solidarity, but mutual fear. The fear that they will be the next one to be outed, exposed, condemned. Sounds familiar? Fisher's language, whilst at times sardonic, is never less than deadly serious, and his condemnation towards the early practitioners of what we now call cancel culture is biblical. He writes, This priesthood of bad conscience, this nest of pious guilt mongers, is exactly what Nietzsche predicted when he said that something worse than Christianity was already on the way. Now, here it is. But Fisher's identification of the founding move of the Vampire's Castle, the disarticulation of class, is where he fully exposes the neoliberal apparatus powering the contemporary left. Mark Fisher determined that the neoliberal project must suppress class consciousness in order to sustain itself. By negating class, the anti-racist, anti-fascist, anti-sexist, anti-terf, anti-gammon, anti-nazi, anti-meat, anti-science, anti-oil, anti-honesty, anti-capitalists operate in the interest of capital. I mean like we didn't already know, right? The capitulation of all politics and culture to the pernicious will of capital is self-evident. We live in a society of gross inequality and horrific right-wing populism. 
Our economy is built on debt and exploitation, and our lives are increasingly defined by depression and anxiety. How can capitalism be challenged if the working class are excluded from the oppositional struggle? Fisher writes, Why would capital be concerned about a left that replaces class politics with a moralising individualism, and that far from building solidarity, spreads fear and insecurity? A left without class is just a liberal pressure group. The distance between the contemporary left and the working class is no longer a matter of debate. But as Fisher observed a decade ago, why would that matter when The aim is not to popularise a leftist position or to win people over to it, but to remain in a position of elite superiority. Cancel culture exists to cancel class. The reaction to the essay was, as Fisher anticipated, no less than extreme and only confirmed as tactical genius. Exiting the vampire castle is a linguistic trap designed by Fisher specifically to provoke his targets into action. Taking his bait, the flapping handmaidens of cancel culture flew into a cacophony of rage and damnation, exposing and condemning themselves to the sunlit lens of Mark Fisher's outstanding analysis. Exiting the vampire castle is, however, much more than a searing and cunning polemic. It is a manifesto and rallying call for the rebirth of class politics and class consciousness. Anyone cognizant as to the threat posed by capital and keen to act will find implicit instruction within it. In the weeks following publication, despite being pilloried and hounded, Fisher spoke with a sense of relief at having drawn the demons from their crypt and expressed a newfound confidence and determination to no longer live in fear. Yet in the decades since publication, the grim phenomenon of cancel culture has become an accepted factor of our lives, whilst Mark Fisher took his own in 2017. In the much sought after real estate of capitalist cyberspace, Russell Brand built an impressive independent entertainment news platform and he is now subject to a forced eviction. That the left are lockstep with the right-wing media is simply the collective and effortless expression of liberal middle-class ideology. Who are you to talk about politics, let alone amass six million subscribers? Well, who is he? Only Russell Brand can answer that. Ten years ago, he was an angry, eloquent, self-educated, class-conscious, working-class man. And that is why Mark Fisher fought his corner. Because after all, the interests of the working class are the interests of all. The interests of the bourgeoisie are the interests of capital, which are the interests of no one. I'm saying I was part of a social and economic class that is underserved by the current political system and when you have huge impoverished populations people get drug problems and don't want to engage with the current political system because they see that it doesn't work for them. What? 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 What?